Welcome to the studio. Today we're talking about something that Polymaker once said that they would never do. Refill spools. What? No way. I know. And hey, if you already know that you love refills, I'll have my Polymaker affiliate link on the screen and in the description. You should probably head over to their website and get them before they sell out. And then of course, come back here because I have some thoughts on this whole refill ecosystem. All right, let's get into it. These are the brand new Panchroma PLA refills. The same high quality Polymaker filament that you already know, but now without the permanent spool. You mount the filament coil onto a reusable master spool. Polymaker even sent over their downloadable master spool file and I printed it out on a Bamboo Lab H2D and printed it in cold white Polylite PLA Pro. It uh, printed perfectly and it snapped together beautifully. These refills are designed to work with master spools from companies like Bamboo Lab and Anycubic and of course work inside their AMS systems. And Polymaker will release an official injection molded plastic master spool in 2026. Now, right now, you can go ahead and just download their free master spool STL on launch day and I'll have that in the description. Um, you can go print your own. Refills are often marketed as eco-friendly. But here's where things get interesting. Polymaker already ships their regular filament on cardboard spools. Cardboard is already recyclable, compostable, and here on the ranch, we literally burn them for zero waste. We literally turn cardboard spools into heat. It's very efficient. And so if you're interested in switching from cardboard to a plastic master spool, that's not automatically more green. Yes, you are reducing single-use packaging waste compared to full plastic spools, but you're also introducing a reusable plastic part where none existed before. You will literally be spending money and time making a new thing that really doesn't solve a problem. It's not bad, it's just a different kind of sustainability equation. Now, let's talk about durability. A reusable plastic spool isn't going to warp or soften if it gets damp like cardboard and probably won't get damaged in shipping. And it's much more consistent for automated systems like AMS units. But that durability comes with a small cost assembly. You'll need to seat the coil, align the halves, lock it together, and remove the straps. Now, if you print a lot of colors or swap often, that setup repeats over and over again. So convenience really depends on your workflow. If your printing is AMS based and you love standardized spool geometry, refills definitely make sense. But if you're a one spool at a time kind of maker, it's just one more thing that you're gonna have to deal with. Now, I am interested in exactly what you think about filament refills. So before filming this segment, I asked all of you on X what you think about this type of solution. And do you think that they are better? Do you not care? Do you like plastic or cardboard? What are your preferences? And the responses were great. It's clear that people have a wide range of opinions and that's what makes this so interesting. Refills aren't just about cost or packaging, they're about workflow, convenience, and personal preference. Now let's talk about a few real world downsides that are worth knowing. Because refills aren't wound as tightly as factory spools, sometimes the filament can shift or it can catch between the edge of the coil and the hub of the master spool. That can cause minor snags or jams if the spool isn't seated perfectly. And if you lose grip on that coil during loading, it can unravel fast, leaving you with a tangled mess that's not fun to fix and probably just a throwaway spool and a waste of money. Little frustrations like that don't happen with standard spools as often, and that's part of what makes refills feel a little less plug and play. So let's talk about one of the most common reasons that I see people interested in refill spools. The price. Polymaker's refill pricing starts at about $17.99 and goes up to about $27.99 depending on the line. Usually about $2 to $3 less than the same filament on a regular spool. Basic PLA is going to run you about $19.99 on a regular spool and about $17.99 as a refill. Matte filaments are about $20.99 versus $17.99. Marble, roughly $21.99 on a regular spool, and compare that to about $18.99 as a refill. And premium colors, they're all gonna be very similarly priced, right? They're at least the Delta. And starlights and gradients, I think those drop from about $29.99 to about $27.99 for refills. 
those savings can add up if you're burning through spools every single week across multiple printers. If you're just printing occasionally, the difference may not be enough to matter. Now here's something else to consider. If you've ever bought filament from Bamboo Labs before, then you might already have their master spools lying around. That's a nice bonus because you can reuse those instead of printing new ones with Polymaker's refill spools. It's a way to save money and cut waste if you're already in that ecosystem. And what about the leftover bits that we always find on spools of filament, right? You always have like 50, 100 grams of filament left over and we have those stacked everywhere. Well, you can use those leftover grams to actually print master spools. So it's a great way to turn what would be waste into something useful. Let's, let's reflect here for a moment. Let me ask you a question. When you've got a nearly empty spool and it's time to reload, do you really wanna stop what you're doing? Unload what's remaining on that master spool, open up a new spool, load it, you know, cut it, snap it together every single time, right? Or would you just rather open up a package of filament, load it in the printer and continue? If saving a couple of dollars per roll is worth that effort, awesome. But if you're already using Polymaker's cardboard spools, you might actually be adding plastic to your workflow instead of removing it. So the eco reason kind of goes out the window and you're gonna be trading time for money. And here's another one. If you want a master spool for every color that you keep on hand, are you really going to print 25, 50, or even 100 of them? That's hours and hours of print time and several dollars in filament per master spool. That's time and money that can simply go toward more filament that's ready to use. So who are master spools and refills for? If you run AMS systems, operate multiple printers, or care about packaging waste and long-term spool reusability, you'll probably love this. If you enjoy experimenting with systems and want tighter control over storage and your spool design, then it's definitely a win. Who this isn't for? Makers who value simplicity, or anyone really, that already is happy with Polymaker's cardboard spools. If you print casually or don't burn through filament quickly, the setup time and spool printing might not be worth it. Okay, now I have a personal preference for cardboard spools, but to try and be fair here, let's talk about the downsides there. If you order just one or maybe two rolls at a time, they can sometimes come bent or damaged during shipping and they're not gonna roll well in your AMS. And others have reported in their AMS units that the cardboard can shed a little bit of dust causing problems. Now, it's not a deal breaker, a quick blast of air now and then will keep your AMS clean. And of course, if you order spools by the two, three, four, five in a box, less likely they'll arrive damaged. All right, here are my final thoughts. I think people just really like the idea of filament refills. It feels sustainable and it just sounds efficient. But when you look closer at the product itself, it isn't exactly industry changing. That doesn't mean it's bad, it's just one more option for us makers and creators. And I really love that Polymaker is giving us that choice. Their printable master spool worked perfectly for me and it's great to see them experimenting with new ideas that fit AMS systems and sustainability goals. But for our studio here, I am still sticking with cardboard spools. They're simple, recyclable, no fuss, and they've just worked well for us. Now, I'd love to hear what you think do you use refills or do you prefer traditional spools? Let me know in the comments below and I'll be reading all of them. And if you wanna try these refills for yourself, I'll have that affiliate link on the screen and in the description. Go check them out, especially before they're gone. And I'll also have that downloadable uh, master spool file for you uh, linked in the description. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you on the next one. Also, oh, don't forget to like and subscribe and YouTube wants you to watch that video right there. So go do it, so click on it, watch it. And then binge all of my videos. All right.